Hi, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the next edition in List Week, this time the best hit country songs of 2022. Every year I do two different song videos, one of which is the best hit songs and those are songs that only come from Billboard's year-end hot country songs chart. There are 100 different songs on this chart and they have a metric that takes into account streaming and radio airplay and digital sales and everything else in order to come up with what they view as the 100 biggest songs in the genre. And today's list is a top 10 exclusively pulling from this chart. So I'm just gonna say it up front. If you are unhappy that your favorite song is not in this video, well, A, it might be in the next video, which is made up of non-hits and album cuts, and B, go ahead and click on the chart that's linked in the description first, see if your song is actually as big of a hit as you think it is, and if it's not over there, well, you don't need to whine to me about it here. The other big rule for this chart is the same as all of my lists, and that is only one entry per artist. So. If someone had two big hit songs, they're only getting one of them on this list and its presence negates the inclusion of any of the others. Although that is not necessarily true for featured artists. They're the only ones that are allowed to overlap and that does make a difference this year. With those rules in place, let's look at the 10 best hit country songs of 2022, according to me. It's just my opinion, okay? At number 10 is Cole Swindell's She Had Me at Heads Carolina. Now, it's no secret to anyone that watches the channel that I am not the biggest Cole Swindell fan. I have found a lot of his music over the years excessively bro-ish and just sort of lyrically shallow. But you're lying if you do not jam out to this redo or kind of interpolation of Jody Messina's Heads Carolina, Tales California. Heads Carolina, Tales California, somewhere greener, somewhere now, in the past couple years, I have mentioned Frankenstein country or I've mentioned songs that are literally about singing old songs in order to just get those melodies into a modern country song. And that's definitely the conceit here. Like in this track, there is a girl singing karaoke of Heads Carolina Tales California, and Cole is pining over her being like, maybe she'd fall for a boy from South Georgia. And I gotta say, it just works. Mainly because the melody of Heads Carolina Tales California works so well. And it has led to a little mini renaissance of Joe D. Messina. She was at the CMA Awards. Now she's getting to go play big shows and she's clearly moved by how much people actually know her music. And if for no other reason than Cole Swindell has sort of reintroduced Jodie Messina to a new generation and continued to kind of build the legacy of her 90s country catalog, which has some bangers, I gotta include this here. And she's even on the remix. But yeah, I know a lot of people say, oh, this song sucks compared to the original. I don't really agree. I think it's super fun, which is why it was one of the most massive hits of the year. I think it was number one for like six weeks. At number nine, I have Carly Pierce and Asha McBride with Never Wanted to Be That Girl. I never wanted to be that girl. I never wanted to hate. This duet came off Carly Pierce's 29 Written in Stone, one of my albums of the year last year. And in it, Carly Pierce and Asha McBride are playing the roles of both the woman and the other woman who are each lamenting their part in the fact that they are sharing the same man. In some ways, this song is like a more down to earth version of Two Black Cadillacs by Carrie Underwood. Where instead of killing the man that is cheating on them, they both just feel icky about their role in an affair. And that's why this song works. It's not trying to do too much. They just are sort of feeling ashamed of themselves. They wrote this alongside Shane McNally, who is great in sort of longing songs like this. And together they put a few little key details in that just bring this story to life. I love the lyric where as soon as he gets home, he hops in the shower and you spend half an hour going through his phone. Like something like that tells the whole story right there in one line, doesn't it? And I think the echo effect of Carly saying, I never wanted to be that girl and Ashley kind of mirroring that a few seconds later is such a cool way of experiencing solidarity, but also them being on different pages at the same time. It's reminiscent of Does He Love You? Anyway, an all-around great song, and it was a hit not only for Carly Pierce, but also really the first big hit for Ashley McBride, which is cool to see, and I love that. Number eight is The Kind of Love We Make by Luke Combs. Let's get some candles burning and some records. 
Luke Combs' growing up has definitely taken some criticism for feeling a little bit samey-samey as the rest of the Luke Combs catalog. Solid, sturdy, country rock songs that are delivered well by Luke, but maybe not that exciting. But I have always felt like The Kind of Love We Make is one of the clear, sonic standouts of that whole album. It reminds me of Ain't Nothing About You by Brooks and Dunn. It's just got that really cool electric guitar lick in the beginning that almost feels a bit naughty, and then you do get the big drop for the chorus where he's talking about letting the candles burn and getting together. Look, it's a sexy time song. And even though he drops the dreaded lyric, we're doing what we're doing, I can forgive it because I just find this a really catchy, likable melody and definitely my favorite Luke Combs song in a while. Ironically, even though it's one of the biggest and fastest rising hits of his career, it's like his first one that wasn't technically number one. I think it got blocked by She Had Him at Heads Carolina. At number seven is Flower Shops by Ernest featuring Morgan Wallen. I'll buy violets and daisies to hide. The fact that Flower Shops, a slow and extremely steel-soaked country waltz that's in six, was the number 30 song on Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart for the year is so awesome. It's like, we're winning, you know? All the people that for years are like, oh, these little traditionalists that like the sound of country music, they're so annoying, the sound needs to evolve. Well, guess what, you know? It might not have been the biggest radio smash, but it was a big freaking hit that the biggest country star of the moment was willing to be featured on, and that makes me really freaking happy. And young people, maybe they do like being sad boys, and they do like traditional country music every now and then. Ernest wrote this along with Ben Burgess and Mark Holman, and it is just a great, classic, sad lyric about a girl that's feeling sad and you are buying apology flowers. And the whole chorus is, you know, Mr. I'll buy your roses and I'll buy your daisies and violets, you know. He's accruing as many flowers as possible to give as big of an apology as possible. The verses also have some great lyrics. I love when he says, there's tears in her blues, bloodshot in mine. I like when he says, I took some pills, she took the dogs. Just really smart writing that tells a lot in a few words. I've talked about this mini trend for a few years now of Joey Moy continuing to sort of embrace country or production. And that's here on this as well. A lot of Ernest's album was surprisingly country. At number six is Tennessee Orange by Megan Maroney. I met somebody and he's got blue eyes. Yeah. It is so amazing that this song made the Hot Country Songs chart at all because she did not have a major label deal till like a couple weeks ago. She didn't even get added to country radio till yesterday, which was well after this chart was done being made. This song is one of the many college football romance songs where somehow the love of two individuals transcends a college football rivalry. But of all of them that were released this year, is definitely my favorite. Melodically, it almost reminds me of Dina Carter's Strawberry Wine, except instead of kind of like this lush, clean voice, Megan Maroney's got a way huskier tone. And it just sounds so lovely when she falls into the chorus and says, I met somebody, and I don't know, it just feels like romance. It feels like young love when that happens. And I do like the whole conceit of the song, how she's so worried that her Georgia family is gonna be disappointed she's dating a guy that goes to UT. The hook of, in Georgia they'd call it a sin, but I'm wearing Tennessee orange for him, is so smart. And I love when she says, he makes me forget that I've always looked better in red. I think it's cool how hyper-feminine that is as kind of the emotional climax of the song. Like, she's given up the color she looks best in because she's met this guy. And that's kind of Megan's vibe. She likes the platinum hair and the makeup and the fashion and it just really works. Yeah, I've loved this song from the second I heard it and it's so cool that it became such an organic hit. And I imagine it's going to be much higher on the Hot Country Songs chart next year, but Alas, it will not be allowed to be included. One other ground rule I forgot to say in the beginning is that if a song was on one of my year-end lists in years past, it cannot be included this year. So that rules out stuff like You Should Probably Leave, Whiskey and Rain, and Tequila Little Time, all of which made this year's chart but won't be on this year's list. Number five is Wait in the Truck by Hardy and Lainey Wilson. I got turned around in some little town I knew. This is another song where I just love what it represents for the state of country music. This song is weird. It is gothic. It's a big story. And it actually makes you think. You don't even know if you agree with the morality of it. Kind of the same way you feel when you listen to Fancy by Reba McIntyre or something. But that's the whole thing that makes it exciting. This is a story about revenge and justice and how there is a blurry line between the two 
Hardy sees a girl getting abused and he goes and kills the man that's abusing her and he gets sent to prison. Meanwhile, she comes in on the chorus and is like, I don't know if he's an angel, but my life got better when he said wait in the truck and did what he had to do. There's a ton of great lines in this song. I like when she says, I never thought my day of justice would come from a judge under the seat. That's such a cool little judge justice pun because obviously a judge is also a gun and he took that gun and went in there and killed this man meanwhile i love when hardy's in prison and you get those choruses of people singing have mercy on me but he also doesn't feel bad about what he did it's just a weird song and everyone's like this is unrealistic and yet duh yeah it's unrealistic but it's also a song and songs are not meant to necessarily always be realistic sometimes they're meant to transport you it was a very cool opening moment for what is shaping up to be an extremely cool release in january of next year hardy's mockingbird and the crow album at number four is morgan wallen's thought you should know This song is a stunner to me and I have thought that as soon as Morgan played it on Instagram last year. It is a song about reassuring your mom that everything's going okay. And I think it walks that line of hopeful reassurance and kind of shame and vulnerability really well. Morgan wrote this alongside Nicole Gallion and Miranda Lambert. And I feel like I can really detect Miranda Lambert's influence on a track like this. It reminds me so much of my very favorite Miranda Lambert song, What About Georgia? Where she's asking a guy basically, hey, would your parents be proud of the man you are right now? That's sort of the same thing that Morgan is reflecting on. And there's an added nuance to the song in that it's coming from Morgan, who had a pretty public fall from grace, which maybe adds kind of like a meta commentary on the whole song. But man, his voice sounds so beautiful on it. I love how he delivers it. He's got that rasp on full display when he says, thought you should know. You know how Morgan does that little like head jerk thing? You can almost hear that head jerk. And he says like, I thought you should know. I thought you should know. I thought you should know. And I think what I love about that is that's such like a masculine way of connecting with your mother. It's intimate without being too intimate. He's saying all these big updates like, oh, I met this girl and she lets me fish. And like, I know you lose sleep over me, but like, I'm actually doing okay. And he's saying all these things that are actually really sweet, trying to connect with her. But then he's like, I just thought you should know. Like kind of backs off from that intimacy a little bit. And there's something just very human about that. One of the most gorgeous melodies of the year and definitely one of my favorite songs. Before we get into the top three, here are a few honorable mentions. First off, Half of Me by Thomas Rhett and Riley Green. I don't care that it sounds exactly the same as Beer Can't Fix. That was one of the best songs on Country Again, and this song is also a bop. Half of me wants a cool Till You Can't by Cody Johnson. That's kind of my inspirational live like you were dying moment jam when it comes to country radio songs. If you got a chance, take it. Son of a Sinner by Jelly Roll. Yeah, that's the only Jelly Roll song I have heard. But boy, it's gorgeous and real. I'm just a long son of a sinner. Heart Like a Truck by Lainey Wilson. Probably my favorite note of the year that was hit musically is the big high note on Heart Like a Truck. It's just a show-stopping moment. This probably would have been in the top 10, but I felt like we already had weight in the truck with Lainey Wilson, and I'm like, we can't have two Lainey Truck songs out of 10. I would say both Rock in a Hard Place and Fall in Love by Bailey Zimmerman. I like his voice. I like the surprising amount of steel on these songs. I think the lyrics are above average. So I'm, you know, I definitely have my eye on Bailey. I was just listening to his new album the other day. And there's a lot to like there. He's more than just a TikToker. Between a rock and a hard place. And then also I really liked Whiskey on You by Nate Smith. He's got a crazy good voice too. Ain't gonna and overall, I think the hit songs this year, there's not as much cringe as there has been in years past. Even stuff like Same Boat by Zach Brown Band, Down Home by Jimmy Allen. I feel like compared to a lot of their recent output, that stuff's good. Even Party Mode by Dustin Lynch. I am like, I don't know what happened to me that I am the person that has a soft spot for Party Mode and everyone else is like, that song is trash. He just says Party Mode over and over again. I think musically, this sounds actually pretty good. Party Mode, Party Mode. But yeah, I'm not saying those are my honorable mentions. I'm just like, this was kind of an okay year. But back to the countdown. At number three is Everything She Ain't by Haley Witters. It's crazy that this song came out in January and I feel like I have been beating the drum for it. Or maybe I've been uh, 
double clapping for it to become a hit because it's finally starting to happen. That song climbed into the top 40 of country radio recently. It was in the 90s on the year-end Hot Country Songs chart. And doesn't that make me and you very happy? Because this is such like a 90s resurgence song. We got prominent fiddle. We got clever little sassy lyrics. It definitely feels like the second coming of like the Dixie Chicks or even if Casey Musgraves had stayed in that original country lane that she was in. This song in a word is cute. And in two words is cute and confident. And in three words is cute, confident, and country. I guess we're all sea themed. From the very first line, Haley kind of lays out this lyric where she is trying to shade this girl that has this guy's attention. And she says, she ain't a peach you ought to be picking, which is a perfectly Southern tell off, or I guess Midwestern in her case. And I love the confidence that the main hook of this song requires where she's saying that like, she's better than this girl that has a Hollywood smile. She goes, I'm everything she is and everything she ain't, which is hilarious. Plus that little double clap going into the chorus, it's just infectious. I see why it became a big TikTok trend. And this song, I'm telling you, it is a bridge to your non-country listening friends. This one has that special sauce that gets people that otherwise would kind of roll their eyes at country to listen to country. And maybe while they're on Haley's page, they might venture over to like Flatland Cavalry. Then they might venture over to the Turnpike Troubadours. And who knows, they might be a Zach Bryan fan in a year. I can definitely have a little bit more somber taste and this was my most played song of the year and for a guy with kind of somber taste usually that really surprised me but it's just a jam. At number two is Zach Bryan with Something in the Orange. To you I'm just a man, to me you're all I am. Man I feel kind of bad having Zach at number two on two lists in a row for someone that I'm such a big fan of but you know, he's doing fine. Something in the Orange is a showstopper of a sad song. He's staring into the sunset, thinking about the end of a doomed relationship. Well, it doesn't start doomed, actually. The first time he says, something in the orange tells me we're not done. But as the song goes on, it evolves into, something in the orange tells me you're never coming home. This song is so Zach in that he's like feeling everything. He's poisoned himself and he feels defeated. He says, where the hell am I supposed to go? The big kind of start of the chorus is that screamed out lyric, to you, I'm just a man. To me, you're all I am. And that's just so damn sad. Like he can't make her feel the way about him that he feels about her. And just trailing off at the end with, please turn those headlights around, please turn those headlights around and you know it's not gonna happen, it's just sad. And man, it's so simple too. You got Zach on guitar, you got Reed Connolly, our friend from the Steel Guitar video. He's playing that slide guitar through this song. It's so spare and so simple and raw. A crazy thing is happening now in that it's actually becoming a mainstream hit against all odds. Like somewhere in America, they're playing Parma Lee and Zach Bryan back to back on country radio. And that's kind of cool. Although damn, you really have to be a pretty extravagant success to convince radio to do that when you are not coming out of the major label system. And that's exactly what Zach has done. And it also should be noted, this is the only solo right on my whole list. And I believe on the whole Hot Country Songs chart. So you love to see it. But my very favorite song, my number one top hit country song for 2022 is Handle On You by Parker McCollum. I love this song. I love it more than I've ever loved a Parker McCollum song. And in just every way, musically, lyrically, tonally, it just works. The concept of this song isn't especially revolutionary. He's drinking too much to get over a girl that has left him heartbroken. But the way they do it is just super effective. It does have one of those songs that all kind of builds to this little punny hook of, I finally got a handle on you. I finally figured you out. But obviously, handle also means you know, a bottle of liquor. He says he's drinking everything from Tennessee to Kentucky because you ain't here to love me. But I don't feel like they overdo that and make it something hokey where the entire verse is like, some people grab the handle of a car and some people have to handle their business, but I found a handle on you. Some songs like overdo that. In this case, I feel like it's just the right amount of clever 
without writing only to the hook. So much of the writing is so good on this. Parker wrote this along with Monty Criswell, and again, only two writers instead of three, and I think that adds a lot of strength to the song. There's two especially just great songwritery lyrics that I love. I love when he says, after all this back and forth, a fifth won't do, and it switches from talking about fourth to then fifth. It's so smart and weird. And then I love in the second verse when he says, I tell myself I should quit, but I don't listen to drunks. He dismisses his own self as an excuse to continue drinking, but the reason he dismisses himself is he is drinking. I mean, it's just beautifully alcoholic, I suppose. This song has some amazing guitar moments. You get this lower end of the electric guitar and a couple solos, and you get the steel guitar. And when he says, Tennessee and Kentucky, and it bends up behind him with the steel, that is so cool. There is a real sophistication in the production on this song. Okay, and I just looked up the producer, John Randall. That makes so much sense, you know? John Randall is an amazing producer, and boy, does this song sound amazing and expensive, and I really hope Parker stays in this lane. He actually just dropped another song called Smoked. It also sounds amazing, so Parker's going in a great direction here. I don't know, this song, I feel like it's kind of flown under the radar and people maybe all don't think it's so genius as I do, but I freaking love it and I'm happy to have it as my number one favorite hit song of 2022. I would love to know some of y'all's thoughts on the best hit country songs this year. Please leave your favorites in the comments down below. If there's anything that you really think should be on this list or shouldn't be on this list, feel free to weigh in down below. Just don't be a jerk about it and I'm down to chat. And if you were hoping for something a little more obscure, well, you're gonna like the next video. It's way more indie and has a lot more of the kind of random album cuts you might not have heard if you're looking to do some discovery. But until then, hit like, hit subscribe if you've never been here before. All my stuff is linked down below, including my playlist where you can listen to a lot of these songs. And I will talk to you guys soon.